Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to my travel channel, where travels begin at home. I'm in Budapest today, a city of almost 2 million people positioned on the famous River Danube. Budapest is known for a number of key sites, St. Stephen's Cathedral, Parliament, but today I'm heading off the beaten track to a particular site where Budapest began over 2,000 years ago. The capital is located in the north of the country and ranks similar to Warsaw in terms of its size and population within city boundaries. May I introduce one of the oldest and most sparsely populated parts of modern-day Budapest. I decided to come to this spot known as Aquincum, which lies in the district of Obuda of the capital city. As you can see, I'm positioned in a former Roman settlement which was created just after a Celtic presence. This place looks as if it was once a Roman amphitheater where they would have hosted chariot races and contests. It's a bit crazy to think that there would have been once thousands of people cheering on for a contest to proceed. Fight, fight. It lies next to a busy main road which takes away the feeling that, of course, it would have had in the time of the Romans. In the middle of the 4th century, it went into decline, and it wasn't until 1873 the district of Obuda became part of the prosperous Pest and Buddha, forming the name we know of today, Budapest. You don't think of a Buddha when coming to Budapest, but of course it's very much a region that I feel deserves quite a lot of attention. So come, come here, check out the Roman ruins, and I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Also straddling the main road, 10 minutes on foot from Aquincum train station is the entrance to Aquincum Museum. You can find a small collection of artefacts from both Roman and Celtic times. Walking around the outdoor part leaves much to the imagination, owing to the dearth of signs around. Besides this noteworthy part of Budapest, the area of Pest is the throbbing heart of the city. Here you can find everything from colourful street art, tracers and well-kept gardens and parks. One aspect I was particularly fond of were the old trams zipping around. And don't forget to make a visit to Margaret Island, positioned in the middle of the River Danube. Budapest is also famous for their ruin bars, which emerged just after the turn of the millennium, and despite being threatened by real estate projects, have become an important part of youth culture. Among various references to the Hungarian Revolution and the Second World War, Budapest is a surprisingly easy place to get around on public transport and what I consider to be a pretty pedestrian-friendly city. The miscellany of spas Budapest offers is however not the only major draw. Paprika was first introduced to the capital in the mid-16th century and no visit to the country can be fully complete without trying some. Other than for decoration, paprika has become an integral part of the national cuisine and locals will be proud to give you a brief rundown on the role it's played in Hungarian life, including some pretty amusing stories. I hope this video has given you a better insight to a city worth visiting and revisiting. It was my second trip to Budapest after 10 years and I'd not hesitate to go back again. Please stay tuned for my next video, which will be out very shortly. In the meantime, a special thanks to those who have subscribed and are subscribing. Goodbye for now.